This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Okay, well now let's look at the last question on the specimen paper, the paper F2, which is question three. And incidentally, do remember you can do questions in any order. So, uh, you know, if in the exam you found question one, you didn't know much, jump to question two, question three, you always come back to the other one later. All right, for the last time, I've said all the way through these, do look at the requirements quickly before you start spending time reading the body of the question. Question three, part A. It says calculate the following ratios and other statistics for Nicholson for the year ended 30th of November. And you have a whole list there, we'll do them one by one. But I think far more sensible than having spent, however quick you are, reading the whole question. When we come to 3A, well, we should know what these things mean. Return on capital employed, you should have learned what it is. And so you know what to go back and look for. Um, again, rather than have to read everything. If I do go back, I have a quick read at the beginning. Nicholson sells mobile telephones. It supplies its customers with telephones and wireless telephone connections. Customers pay an annual fee plus a monthly charge based on the calls made. Uh, we've recently employed a consultant to install a balanced scorecard system of performance measurement and to benchmark the results against those of the competitors. Compare with the competitors. Unfortunately, the consultant was called away before the work was finished. You've been asked to complete the work. The following data is available. And of course, there's a whole list of things there. Sales, revenue, new products, etc. Well, before we start worrying about any specifics, let's start working through. First of all, return on capital employed. And certainly, not all of these, but a lot of these, you should have learned the rules. Uh, there's hardly any thinking necessary. Return on capital employed. We need to uh, find, and find the profit as a percentage of the total long-term finance. The total capital. Let's see what we can get. First of all, what is the profit? Doesn't take long to find it. The fourth line down, the profit before interest and tax, which is what we use. You know, I'm not going to waste time writing the whole thing down perfectly. It's 48 million as a percentage of uh, the total capital employed. Third line down, the average employed throughout the year, 192 million. What's that as a percent? 48 divided by 192 is 25%. I don't look at the mark allocation, one and a half marks. I don't know, that's actually quite generous. Uh, what about number two? Uh, the return on sales or the operating margin. But again, you should have learnt it, although it's almost defined for you when they say return on sales. Uh, it's the operating profit uh, as a percentage of the sales. Incidentally, I think I said this uh, somewhere during part A. I'm writing out, you may not think that's very neat, but I'm trying to write it down so you can follow what I'm doing. Uh, it slows me down in the exam. Don't, for heaven's sake, if you can do that, nobody will look at your workings here. If you can get the answer on your calculator with writing nothing, then fine. It doesn't matter how you go about it. Um, however, what is the operating profit? We had it a minute ago. It's the profit before interest and tax, which is 48 million. As a percent of the sales, well, the sales revenue is on the first line. For 80 million, it's therefore 
Again, I think that's a very generous at one and a half marks. Uh, number three, asset turnover. Well, asset turnover is simply uh, the total sales, the sales revenue, divided by um, the total capital employed, the long-term capital. Here, we don't do it as a percentage, it's just a multiple. What I mean by that, we found the sales revenue a minute ago, it's in the first line, 480 million. Uh, we'd also earlier found the capital employed, third line, the average capital employed, 192 million. So no percentage or anything here, we simply divide. Uh, it's 2.5 times. I won't waste time interpreting them. We're not asked to interpret them here. Look at the lecture if you're not sure what each of them means. But here, all it wants is the, um, the calculation. What about number... Oh, that was number three. What about number four? The average weight for a telephone repair in days. Now, this one, I, I think, a bit less obvious. It's not something you would have learnt. It's not a sort of standard measure. However, how can am I going to get it? If you look at the table, there's all sorts of um, information, but the two that hit me, remember we're looking at the average weight for telephone repairs, the two things that hit me it tells us the average number returned for repair each year is 10,000. Uh, it also, the other mention of repairs is the very last line. The average number unrepaired at the end of each day, which is 8.04. So how can I put those together and get the average weight for telephone repairs. Well, it's actually similar to something you should have practiced doing when we're looking at how long uh, on average debtors are taking to pay receivables. What I mean is this, uh, how many are returned per day? Returned per day? Well, if you're not told otherwise, assume three six die days in a year. So every day they're returning, on average, 10,000 divided by 365. On average, 27.397. So that's how many they're returning. Uh, how many are unrepaired at the end of each day? 804. So at the end of each day, there are 804 that haven't been repaired. So surely it means that if they're we receiving 27 a day to be repaired, if there are 804 on average still waiting, it must mean they're having to wait 804 divided by 27 a day. On average, therefore, what does it come to? I think they're having to wait 29.35 days. Now, as far as rounding is concerned in the exam, you'll be told, it doesn't say here I know, but you will be told how much to round it by. Uh, in fact, it does say here, it says in days. So it's actually, the correct answer would be 29 days here. Uh, but you would be told if they wanted 0.3 or if they wanted 0.35 and so on. So that would have been odd. I think the first three very, should have been very easy because they're very standard. Number four did take some thought. But notice it's still only one and a half marks. You know, get the easy ones, even if you get stuck on the hard ones. What about number five? 
Percentage of customers lost per annum. Look at what information there is. Ah, they're staring at me. Next to the last line of the table, the number of customers that have been lost is 117,600. So that's how many were lost for, during the year. I want to know what percentage of our customers were lost. So what else do I need? Ah, it tells me what the average number of customers is. So during the year, the average number of customers, fifth line down, is 1.96 million. And so what percentage of them were lost? Well, 117,600 were lost as a percentage of the total number of customers. And what does it give me? Um, I get 6%. So that's an easy one. All right, it takes a few minutes finding the relevant information. But I don't think there's actually much thought needed. Finally, for part A, the percentage of sales attributable to new products. Again, it's not a standard one that you would have learned. It's a combination of interpreting what they're asking for and finding the relevant bits. It's new products. Well, they've told us the second line. Sales attributable to new products is 8 million. Uh, we want to know what percentage of sales are new products. Well, we know what total sales revenue is. It's 480 million. So surely... If 8 million out of the total of 480 are new products, the percentage, which is what we're after, 8 as a percent of 480 is 1.67%. So, that's nice. 8 marks... And I don't know, I've kept saying you need to be aiming, obviously, for at least half marks on every question in Part B. If you get half marks on every question and you can get half marks in total on the multiple choice, then you've passed it. Uh, well, here, even if you've got one or perhaps even two of um, Part A wrong, provided you've got the others right, you would still have passed it. Here I've got them all right, so I've easily passed. Let's see if we can get full marks, part B. I'm completely separate, whether the numbers were easy or hard, but although I appreciate this is only two marks, you wouldn't want to waste time. A balanced scorecard measures performance from four, four perspectives. Briefly explain any one of the four Well, I am not going to write here. Uh, it would just be boring. You've got the printed answer. You can read what the examiner's written. Uh, and it's written very well. And they're obviously not wanting much. Two marks. But just a couple of things. Firstly, not here because you told them, but make sure you have learnt the four perspectives. Customer satisfaction, growth, financial success, process efficiency. Make sure you've learnt them. Because certainly in section A of the exam, they could check that you know what they are. Now here, you didn't need to learn them, you were given them. Also appreciate, you were only asked to explain any one. So there's no point in being clever and explaining two or even all four of them. It would simply waste time, it wouldn't get you any extra marks. Any one of them. Now as I say, read the answer. Uh, because it is written well there, and it'd be silly for me just to write it out. But, mate, I think you should be aware, basically, what they are anyway. Customer satisfaction, we need to check that the customer's happy with what we're delivering them. That there are no... Uh, sorry, that we're delivering good quality, that um, they're not getting delivered bad, not working, broken um, units of whatever we produce. 
that we deliver on time, that sort of thing. Our growth, we want to make sure that um, our business is growing, however well we're doing at the moment. Um, if business is falling, we're going to start doing badly in the future, so we need to look for growth. Financial success, we will need financial measures. Uh, in part A, the first, the second, the third were pure financial measures. We want to be profitable. And finally, process efficiency. Uh, we want to be as efficient as we can. And if we're producing something, the faster we can produce it, and the more efficient we are, um, it'll, it'll help reduce our costs. However, I'll say again, read what the examiner's written. It's a good way of learning the balance scorecard.